Okay, so this is my GPD Micro PC. It's a relatively small on PC. You can use the keyboard with your uh, thumbs or just uh, type normally, but um, either way though, I did some programming on it and uh, we're gonna get into that a little bit later though because um, I guess I should uh, talk a little bit about my Debian setup. It's um, pretty much the same as my uh, normal setup on most of my ThinkPads. I did have to change a few things, such as uh, the Windows key and Shift key are uh, bound together, so you can use like uh, i3 still without uh, some weird contortionist uh, finger movements. Either way though, uh, in terms of programming, that was the issue. But uh, that one is easily solved, and fortunately most places sell keyboards. With the keyboard, it is actually possible to get some work done, but then you have the issue of the screen being quite, uh, well, small actually. It's 1280 by 800, and um, you'll also probably want some headphones if you're using it for traveling, because uh, otherwise uh, it's going to be quite loud. And the battery life's a little short, so uh, bring a power bank. You can get some cheap ones on eBay. But, uh, with the one missing accessory uh, being that weird uh, magnifying lens they have on the CRTs in um, uh, 1985 Brazil, uh, we can get into uh, the actual program. So um, it essentially takes a PBM file in through a pipe and uh, has a few arguments which are essentially the born and survive rules for a lot of the Conway Game of Life derivatives. And as you can tell, the program isn't quite complete, but is in a working state. So the uh, slash G flag essentially just uh, specifies the amount of generations. And now that we have a bunch of PBM files, we can essentially use FFmpeg to turn that into a little video, which uh, as you can tell, uh, worked on the previous photograph. So it will literally uh, make 120 PBM, so I probably should have it set to uh, go to another directory, but we can kind of see the progression here. With uh, each generation, the original image gets a little bit more distorted. So let's actually look at the code. Um, currently it's in uh, one file, but um, I'll probably create some header files and clean this up and uh, finish uh, making all the flags work, but uh, so far um, a lot of the code is just uh, PBM loading and closing and pretty much moving it into a 2D array, but um, it uh, does it quite well in terms of that. There's a few issues, but uh, it's more of like efficiency problems. And um, here's where the actual program happens. So since um, you can get the size and, and dimensions from the uh, PBM struct, uh, we can just uh, kind of go through it and loop through the original image and use it to uh, store the uh, first generation of cells. And then we can apply the rule to it and just swap the pointers over between the uh, data from the uh, first generation and second one on each try in a continuous loop for each generation of cells. And with that, we essentially have something that can do Conway's Game of Life, but a bunch more things. So let's get into PBM files. So uh, it's essentially a monochrome image file if you put P1, there's like no compression, so it's just a series of uh, zeros and ones separated by space. So back to the computer. Okay, so why would you want to use something with a tiny keyboard and tiny display for, um, well, a trip? Well, truth be told, there's probably better options, but uh, this is extremely compact. And if you're planning on bringing a power bank anyways, it uh, makes actually quite a good option. Especially if you're just going to be browsing the web or something similar. I would not recommend it for programming, 
The keyboard layout itself is weird enough, but uh, using Vim with your thumbs is also a little bit of a learning curve. Also, pretend this bag's a camera, because uh, I don't want to redo the rubber band setup. Either way, though, it will fit a uh, mirrorless camera and a tiny bag with uh, a power bank and a computer. So, you probably fit a cell phone in there, too, but the keyboard won't fit. As a final note, let's do some video editing, because I have to upload this somehow. So, during this, it actually um, ended up crashing. Uh, that is a weird quirk with the system. The default uh, TDP is set a little high. You can just uh, change the uh, thermal design power in the BIOS to 8 watts instead of 10 and that will pretty much solve the weird uh, freezing up issues. But keep in mind, I've had this computer for quite a few years, so maybe I just got unlucky in the silicon contest. So, peace and have a good one, and I hope everyone has had a great holiday.